This is the main thing. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, it's this. When you're making your revision notes, think to yourself, Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. It is Shivani here and today I'm going to be giving you some of my tips and advice for if you are in a lower year and you are doing your GCSEs in a couple of years because some of you have commented down below saying that you're really stressed about it and you want to know how much you should do and I know some of you are actually from different countries like America which is so cool because I never thought I could connect with people from loads of different countries around the world and there's so many different types of people commenting down below in the comment section and just I'm so excited that I get to meet and talk to lots of different people it's so nice so this is the stuff that I actually did do because I was really determined to be prepared for year 11 and be prepared throughout all the years so that I could be productive. I mean, I'm in year 11 now and some of this stuff, I am so grateful to my past self that I actually did this. So the first thing that I did was, it's very simple, but it was to be present in your lessons. And I don't just mean being present, like being there in your lessons and turning up for school because that's just a given. You need to be really concentrating in your lessons and be active in your lessons. So stuff I would recommend doing is, you know, if there is an extension worksheet that the teacher said that there is, try and strive to get onto the extension, you know, try and get all of your work done really quickly, get onto the extension and do all the work you possibly can. Put your hand up to answer the questions that the teacher's asking. You know, sometimes I would know the answer and I just wouldn't put my hand up. But now I am that person that always puts the hand up. If you don't understand things, make sure you tell your teacher. Make sure you're like, I don't really understand this. Please could you explain it, miss? And obviously your teacher's gonna help you. And the main benefit of this is that you just really understand so much in your lessons that when you come to revising, you already have a really, really good knowledge around your subject. Right, so the next thing which I did, which I am really grateful for my past self for doing, is getting organised and having a robust organisation system ready. I have always been a person who loves to organise, you know, in my free time, I like organising things and, you know, I'll organise my brother's pencil case and I organised my dad's phone the other day with the iOS 14 update. I just love organising things, it's a little bit of an obsession. And having an organisation system which is robust will help you throughout the years because as soon as you can come home, you can put all of your books away, put all of your revision away into the specific places and your revision isn't flying here, there, everywhere, you know, it's all in one place, it's all organised and it's just going to help you to revise and it's going to make you want to revise more. And also, I am actually going to be making an organisation system video, hopefully next week. It might not be out for next week because I do have my mocks coming up and it's going to be the like the day after that I will post that video, so it might be a bit too much pressure on me because I really want to do well in my mock exams. So look out for that if you really want to know how I organise my stuff personally. Okay, the next thing that I am really proud of myself for doing is revising for my end of topic tests. A lot of people just wing it the night before for their end of topic tests, but I don't really think this is very good because I would revise and make resources for my end of topic tests. And then for my end of year tests, I would just revise from the knowledge that I'd already have from the end of topic test. I would just test myself off my notes. And this was such a good method for me because I would understand so much throughout the year that when it came to the end of the year, I didn't really need to revise that much. I would only have to revise like a week before. So I would really recommend making your notes for your end of topic tests because, you know, it's just going to really help you. So I just really think, especially in the lower years, you do not need to be doing as much revision as you see me doing because the videos that I put out they aren't on a daily basis that's like once or twice a week and I just think in year 10 and year 9 you don't need to do that much work you honestly don't need to do it, especially in year 9 enjoy year 9 and year 10 honestly because when you get to year 11 you just feel this amount of pressure on yourself and I'm just glad that in year 9 and year 10 I just had a good time I didn't really put that much pressure on myself in those years 
to revise every night because I just didn't need to. I would only go over the topics which I didn't feel confident on. Honestly, I think I would have burnt out and I really don't want that to happen to you, to me, to anyone. I don't want anyone to burn out because it's just a horrible feeling. And the last thing which I did, which I'm really happy that I did, was to get textbooks. And I would recommend getting this in year 10. I didn't get them in year 9 because our school gave us um, science textbooks in year 9 and we only did science GCSE in year 9. So I didn't need to get them for year 9 obviously. It's just good to have some extra information uh, from the textbook to help you with making your resources. So now I'm going to go on to the things that I didn't do and that I blooming wish I did do because I just, I just think it would be so helpful now. Think Looking back, I just wish I would have done this. So the first thing is to um, make revision resources that I would actually use and I really wish I would have done this because I made notes in throughout the year like in year 9 and year 10 and that helped me do really well in my end of topic tests and I did make notes. I made notes that look like I'm going to go get some examples of my notes actually. So this is my physics folder. It's very chunky. It's one of the WH Smith ones which I really like. They're really nice. Um, I'll show you an example of what my notes looked like. Right, this is what my notes used to look like. So they used to be like really bold titles and I used to make handwritten notes. But for me personally, I just don't think these notes are very good. Um, number one, because it's just way too much writing. It's just all writing, writing, writing. There's a couple of diagrams, but that's pretty much it. It's not very good to revise off of. Um, they helped me understand while I was writing it down, but it's just too many words for me to read. It's not concise and the, there aren't really bullet points, it's just big paragraphs really. And this is the main thing. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, it's this. When you're making your revision notes, think to yourself, am I going to use this in year 11? Because I am not going to be using these in y this year. I'm not going to be using these to revise off my actual GCSE. So you need to think, am I gonna actually use these? Is this gonna be beneficial? Um, these are beneficial, I mean, for rising for my end of topics and making me understand the topic, but now, what am I supposed to do with these? It's just a bit of a waste of my time. I've perfected my note taking technique by the way now and I am planning to do a video on how I take my notes and I personally think it's the best way to make notes. Make sure you make resources that you are actually going to use. Don't try and make it beautiful and pretty if you're not making it off the spec, if you're not using a textbook, if you're just using one resource. And the next thing which I didn't do, which I really, really wish I did, is I really wish that I had a study space which I was really happy with. I originally was switching up where I was working all the time. I sometimes used to work on the kitchen table, I sometimes worked in the dining room, I sometimes worked in the conservatory, you know. Um, I also then moved to my dad's study, but eventually it just wasn't working out because um, I don't know, I just didn't like working downstairs and I just couldn't concentrate so I decided that I really wanted to move upstairs. Now I have space to put my stuff and I'm so happy because I have a really good study space um, where I have all of my stuff and I just feel like I can sit down, I can do my work, get it done, put it away and I would work on this from like if you're in year 9 and year 10, I would work on getting a good study space because in year 11, you don't want to be changing your environment too much. You don't want to have to like sort all of this out last minute on top of all the stress that you've got already. So I would really, really recommend setting up a really good study space that you can actually work in, that's productive for you and just a good environment for you to start studying in. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and that you found it useful because I honestly think I imparted some pretty good knowledge. I will see you very soon, straight after my mock exams, I will let you know how it went and I hope you have a lovely day.